So this is an introduction to energy. Yeah, you got it. Vatimecum. Joules, yeah, you got it. Okay. Um, and then this is, I hope this is a funny joke. Do you get the joke now? I try, I, I, um, I defined work as a transfer of energy, yes? And now how am I defining energy? In terms of work, yes? Isn't that funny? This is called a circular reference. And th that's funny, yeah, there we go. There's some laughter there. Um, and, and it's funny because really energy is this very difficult thing to explain, okay? So let me try to explain it, and then we're just going to have to go with either understanding it or not, okay? But basically energy makes things go. This morning I had Barbara's shredded oats, and all of those oats had energy in them, okay? And because I have those ener that energy, and my body is burning up that energy, and look at me go, okay? Like, I can go, right? Um, uh, the energy of falling water in the mountains is turning turbines, and those turbines are generating electricity, which makes this projector go, and that camera in the back of the room go. Uh, the energy that's in your batteries is making your calculators go, or your, or your, your iPods do their little thing, right? They're like little computers, right? Okay, it's making them go, and those batteries are used up, and eventually the water behind the dam has to be replenished, and, and yeah, there we go. Eventually I need to eat food, so it's just this thing that's used up, and it makes things go. I can wind up a toy, okay, I can do work on that toy, and it'll store this energy, and then it can, like, go across the floor. Yeah, kind of a thing, okay. Um, and energy is neither created nor destroyed. This is what makes it a powerful concept. It is conserved. Energy is conserved. It is neither created nor destroyed. It is conserved. And we're going to have a conversation about conservation of energy. There was no laughter about that one. Right. And then most of the energy that we encounter is nuclear energy. So whether you're against nuclear energy or, or for nuclear energy, almost all the energy that we have here on Earth is nuclear energy. Everybody's writing that down, mostly nuclear. Okay, and of course, at this point, there's always students that think that most of the energy is not mostly nuclear, and so they've got some kind of energy that they think is not nuclear and I will show you that it is nuclear. So what do we got? What do we got? What, like the, are you talking about the, like, the atom, like the, the nuclear energy like in an atom that keeps the... Yeah, the but now give me something that you think is not nuclear energy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Lifting a rag. Lifting a rag. Well, you lifted that rag. What did you eat today? Had a cup of coffee, that's it. What did you eat yesterday? You ate American food, so you ate yes. corn, okay? Corn grows under the sun, yes? And the sun, the sun uh, is a nuclear reactor. It is turning hydrogen into helium at this point in its life. So that is a nuclear fusion reaction. And so therefore, you lifting that rag is a manifestation of nuclear energy. Just, it went through a few transformations along the way. Come on, come on, come on, come on, bring it on. What? Wind. Wind is caused by the uneven heating of the Earth's surface by the sun. And the sun is a nuclear reactor. Come on, come on. What you got? What you got? Volcano. Volcano. Ah, there we go. Volcanoes are caused by the powerful tectonic forces deep within the earth. Okay? Uh, and at the core, the earth is still molten. It is still molten after four and a half billion years because at the core there is fissionable things. There is, there is a, there, there's a nuclear fission reaction going on in the core. So the earth itself at its core is a nuclear fission reactor. Isn't that crazy? And how did it get to be that way? Well, <laughs> it got to be that way because elements heavier than iron have to be created in supernovas. Isn't that wild? The massive gravitational collapses of, of ancient stars. Before our Earth was formed, some star collapsed. That energy was stored in the form of elements heavier than, heavier than iron. So when you look at Mount Hood, know that it was created by powerful tectonic forces deep within the earth that tap nuclear energy that was stored there by some enormous star collapse that happened before the earth began. Come on, come on. Yes? The survival of tiny organisms deep within the earth. 
Ah, uh, deep within the earth. Like, 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 uh, uh, what are those called? They're extremophiles or something like that, right? But they all eat something like hydrogen sulfide or something like that that it represents chemical stored energy, which you can bet comes from something from the biosphere, probably trickling down, right? It could be something that's created with the earth. And then you could, when you get into like how the earth was created, you could argue that some of that's like pre-nuclear. So maybe you got something there. Yeah, come on. The tide, the tide is caused by the swinging of the Earth due to the moon's gravity, yes? The Earth actually doesn't rotate about its center, it actually, the orbit around the, the moon, and the moon orbits not the center of the Earth, but a point closer to the surface of the Earth than the center. And so the, the motion of the moon causes the tides, and so you could argue that that's happenstance, that's something from the Big Bang, and maybe that's pre-nuclear. A dog barking. What did your dog eat? Probably corn, if it's in America. <laughs> Everybody eats corn. Corn grows under the sun, and you know, the barkatory energy of a dog comes from its food. Yeah. A mushroom growing in a cave. A mushroom growing in a cave is eating some sort of uh, thing from the biosphere that grew under the sun. Yeah. They can't eat nothing. So you got to put like uh, manure or something there. Come on, come on. Oil. Let me say oil. Yeah, we all know that's uh, from the greasy noses of dinosaurs, right? They got all pressed under the earth. I'm not really a geologist, so I might be making. Some. So the point is, um, maybe not necessarily that nuclear power is this wonderful thing, but that energy. I hope I got the point across. That energy makes transformations. It goes from one type to another type. Yeah. Did I get that point across? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting stuff. So here are types. There are three types. Um, and the first one is potential energy. And potential energy can strictly be defined as energy that something has because of its position. Okay? It's energy something has because of its position. So, for example, this mass has more energy now than it does now. Yeah? It's purely its position, yeah? More energy, less energy. We could say that's zero energy if we wanted to. This table represents zero. We could be right? Or maybe the floor does or something, right? How about um, a piece of elastic? Uh, okay. I can store energy in this, can I? They may think I can't. There we go. Yeah, there we go, right? Okay. Can I shoot this? So it's very hard to shoot a single strand. I have to let go of this first, then that. No, very nearly not. All right. Yeah, so the position of my right hand, if this is a bow string or something, all right, the position of my right hand determines how much energy I, I put into the arrow, right? Okay. Um, how about um, position like this? Uh, uh, I've got uh, 2H2 plus O2, and I turn them into 2H2O. This is one position of the molecules. That's another arrangement of them. Isn't this, doesn't this represent energy? Yeah. So you can have gravitational, chemical, spring energy, uh, you can have nuclear energy, right? So, so basically elements that are heavier than iron, especially things like uranium, represent, uh, uh, we can get energy out of them by splitting them. Um, energy, things that are lighter than iron, we can get energy out of them by, by fusing them together. Uh, an elliptical orbit, yeah, we already talked about that, right? So here's a question, what if I take a spring of metal and I compress it? and I wrap it up with uh, a piece of plastic, like nylon string, so it's all compressed, and then I throw that into a uh, sulfuric acid bath, and it dissolves the metal. But the plastic, of course, stays there. So the spring is dissolved when it's compressed, and is storing potential energy. Where does the energy go? Think about it. I'm not gonna give you the answer, because I don't know the answer. Maybe that, maybe energy is not conserved there. Um, the second one is kinetic energy. This is a real basic thing. Um, there, is, there, are, there are many kinds of potential energy. There's only one kind of kinetic energy, yeah? And it's why baseball players wear helmets, yeah? <laughs> there was somebody walking by, I was just about to Probably don't need a helmet for that thing, right? 
Okay, but yeah, it's the energy.